This video is about confidence intervals. We're going to develop a generic R script for, for finding the confidence intervals for proportions. Writing your R script is best done by first studying and developing the details of the three distribution diagram. In a proportion problem, the random variable happens to be a categorical variable, and we're looking at a yes-no question for each individual in the population we're interested in knowing whether they are in the category or not. So the population parameter is the proportion of the population that are yeses. To understand what that P is, we take a sample of size N. In that sample, there is a certain number of them that are yeses. So we could calculate the P hat for that particular sample. So what we're going to think about is the distribution of sample proportions of all the samples of size N. So we're thinking about, although we won't do it, we're thinking about looking at every single possible sample from this population of size n, and we calculate uh, the proportion for each of those. Now in each case, that proportion will be referenced as p hat, and it will be calculated as the number of successes divided by the size of the sample. It is known that under pretty mild conditions, this distribution of sample proportions will be normally distributed. Not only that, the mean of this distribution of sample proportions will be equal to the proportion of the original population. The standard deviation will be equal to the square root of P, the original proportion in this population, times Q. You see, P is the probability of success, the probability of success if you picked one at random. Q is the probability of failure and is always equal to 1 minus P. So it's going to be the square root of P times Q divided by this by N. That's going to be the standard deviation of the distribution of these sample proportions. Since this is a normal distribution, it can be converted to a standard normal distribution. That these can be converted to z-scores, and z-scores are always calculated the same way. If we wanted to find the z-score of a particular p-hat, we would take p-hat minus the mean of the population that we're in. What that's doing is telling how far p-hat is away from the mean. And all of that is divided by this standard deviation. So literally, the z-score is telling how far, how many standard deviations a particular value is away from the mean. In a confidence interval problem, we're interested in building an interval that we have a certain level of confidence that that interval contains the population mean. First piece of information will be the confidence level. For this example, let's say that the confidence level is 90%. Enough information needs to be provided to find the p hat of our particular sample. Suppose that we're looking at a sample that has 200 individuals in it with 85 successes. From that information, we can do some calculations. For example, P hat will be the number of successes in the sample divided by the size of the sample. Now turn your attention to the standard normal distribution. We want to find a z value so that 90% of the population, is, we're looking for a z value so that 90% of the population is between a minus z and z. We learned how to do that kind of a problem in chapter 6. The idea is that we know a probability and we're trying to find a quantile, so we'll use a Q-norm. What we need to know then is what the probability is below the particular z-value that we're looking for. I know that the total area under the curve is 1, or 100%. If I subtract this 90% from 100%, then there's got to be 10% out in this 
um, in these two tails. So one minus the confidence level, whatever the confidence level is, is going to be tell me the the area in the two tails. Because of the symmetry in this problem, the area in in one of the tails, because each of these tails are the same size, is going to be the tails divided by two. So Z is going to be Q norm of this yellow area. Now think about it, there's two ways to find that yellow area. We could take this confidence level, which is that area, plus alpha. Or we could take the total of one, 100%, and then minus this alpha. In my script, I'm using one minus alpha to describe this yellow area. Now, I'd like to know what that distance is from the mean up to Z when it's moved back up here. To do that, I will need to know what this standard deviation is. Unfortunately, I can't find that standard deviation because I don't know what P is and I don't know what Q is. However, I could approximate it by using P hat and Q hat. I've already calculated p hat in my script, so I'll need to calculate p hat, and then I'll be able to, to get this approximation, which we will call a standard error. So q hat is just 1 minus p hat. And then our standard error is going to be the square root of p hat times q hat divided by n. Now, when we move this distance back up to here and measure it in, in uh, p hats and instead of uh, uh, standard deviations, we're going to call that a margin of error. The margin of error is simply that z value, which tells how many standard deviations I need to be away from the mean, times that standard error that we've calculated, which is this, uh, our best approximation for the standard deviation up here. So it's the number of standard deviations away times the standard deviation. That was the margin of error. Now we're finally ready to build our, our interval. The lower bound for our interval will be p hat minus the margin of error. The upper bound for our interval will be p hat plus the margin of error. Now, why that gives us a 90% confidence that we actually have the, the uh, population uh, mean in there, well, that will be discussed in another video. But this R script is kind of a generic R script for finding the confidence interval in a proportion problem.